CWL Vegas showed us some incredible moments. However, at the same time, it showed us, at times, just as many negatives. Teams like Envy, Red Reserve, FaZe, and 100T all failed to place inside the top eight, which is pretty crazy to think about. Joining us today is the man who saw it all and commentated on it. We've got CWL commentator and my good buddy Chance. Chance, I've been seeing you a lot recently, not just on the CWL streams, but also on Reddit. Yeah, I mean, if, look, anything you do in life, if you want attention, it's not about how hard you work. It's not about your ability to do the job. It's your meme factor. If you can be <laughs> memed, you'll have attention, and then your Twitter won't stop poking at you the entire <laughs> weekend. So, yeah, that's the, the goal in life, just to be meme. Wow, you, we, we've already learned a lot, and Black Ops 4 has just started. That's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think you might have learned the, uh, the blueprint for the future, potentially. Yeah, I'm going to go the courage route in the upcoming months here. There you go. I'm, I'm waiting for those stream clips to start taking place. But let's go ahead and talk about what has taken over, not just the Reddit, because that's been you, but the Call of Duty Reddit more specifically, uh, the questions surrounding the teams that underperformed at Vegas. Primarily talking on 100 Thieves, yourself and I actually had a segment talking about this particular uh, roster whenever it formed. We were kind of breaking down and talking and saying, like, wow, this team looks so, so good on paper. The big three they possess – and they come out and place the way they do. Um, I would say like like this. Heading into Vegas, where were Chance's expectations for Hunter T? Uh, top four, unless something like catastrophic happens. And then I was fairly confident. They, like 50-50, they end up in grand finals. Very confident top four. 50-50, they get past the other killers like E United or Spice or LG to make it to the grand finals. Yeah, I was kind of there too. I was thinking like, unless something random happens and this team just absolutely starts to struggle, like this group on paper makes sense. Like Enable as the IGL, that's something that LG didn't really have, uh, you know, kind of figured out was a designated in-game leader type position, which is what I was really worried about for LG. They kind of flip flop, but I was also kind of in that same situation, Hunter T at top four. Um, regarding records at CDO Vegas, and we were kind of talking about this a little bit, hard point, they were five and five. Search and Destroy, they were 1-5, and five, and Control, they were 5-1. and one. Now, to compare them to a team like LG, who I feel like, you know, they're, they're decently similar as far as, like, having two or three major stars, kind of having guys left there to kind of fill in the gaps, it was totally opposite, which is what I expected to be the same identity that a 100T would have. I expected them to be great in Search and Destroy, to be decent in Hardpoint, and then to just absolutely collapse when it came down to Control. Um, however, it just was not at all that being the case. Uh, S and D KD heading into World War II, right? Or after World War II. Search and destroy KD. This is the major thing that we were talking about through that segment, Chance. We have three players who in World War II were top 10 in search and destroy KD. Three of these players from Hunter T. Top 10, four within the top 20. S and D kills per round, three in the top 10, four in the top 15. Crazy to think about. From what you saw at Vegas where exactly did Hunter T go wrong? Like, was there any outlier specifically as to what their struggle was? Um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. The biggest outlier was the S and D because, like, keep in mind the hard point record being five and five isn't great, but they still played a United. They still played LG, like two of the top four teams. Not easy competition. So if you're splitting even on maps against the best teams in the game, that means you're among the best teams in the game. So. You identify the S and D, and then you try to look. Well, the first thing I try to do is look at the stats to try to find out a problem, and they weren't bad. Like the stats definitely didn't show like you know a one in five record necessarily, like below average, below what you'd expect, but not that bad. And then there were some weird things that I noticed, and I think the number one thing being Slasher had the second highest percent of team damage out of everybody. I, I the only person that beat him out in doing the amount of team damage was Luca. But Slasher put up like 28%, and that seems wrong. Like, the average output should be about 20%. If one guy is that far past as an outlier, something doesn't seem to be working. But then to take a deeper look into Slasher, he had a very high damage per round, which would be seemingly a good thing. But then it got bad when he also had a very high damage per kill. Obviously, you get 150 health. If every single kill you get, you're averaging 150 damage per kill, that is mean if you shoot at someone, they die. He was averaging, I think it was 355 damage per kill, which means it's taking him what would be like more than two kills, like two and a half kills just to kill one person. So he's doing a ton of damage and not getting any results. And there's two options for that in my mind. 
one, either Slasher isn't doing his job properly, or two, the rest of the team isn't capitalizing on when Slasher is doing damage to people to force them into a bad position or get them away, and the trades aren't coming in from his team, or the map positioning isn't there from his team. So I don't know which the problem would be for 100 Thieves, but I think you just start looking at one player and you identify, okay, something with the team chemistry is completely off. And obviously you can do a much deeper dive than that, but it's a very rough starting point for him. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you brought it up well with the stats, which I want to get into as well. But whenever, like, obviously coming into this event, the reason why we had them so high was just because of their roster, but also because of their recent performance in the pro downs. Like, they were looking great having some super solid placements, constantly meeting up against Optic Gaming and taking down some very high-level squads as well. But there were just so many moments throughout Vegas where I was watching them play, and I was like, okay, why are, why are there three guys rushing a hard point with 12 seconds left? Like, why are we seeing so many splits? And to me, it really relates around the idea of miscommunication. And granted, like I said, the, the chemistry part has to be a factor because a lot of these guys are recently, you know, starting off playing together outside of the three who come from TK. But the fact of, you know, Octane never playing with this group, Slasher never playing with this group. And the fact that Octane and Slasher are now on the same team after being rivals for what? Since, like, we could argue AW, uh, some of the best ARs in the world, um, but I think one thing is for sure, based on their search and destroy record primarily, uh, you can kind of use S&D to a point as an indicator for how good the chemistry is with a lineup. Like there are sometimes when we talk about, oh, this team's great at search and destroy, they usually have good chemistry. It's just that the slang portion isn't really there. And for this team to be as bad as they were at search and destroy, based off how good they were, you know, just what last season to me is a little bit worrisome. Um, but based off a few stats, right, Kenny finishes off with a 0 0.93 in respawn, KD. I don't know where Kenny was this event uh, to an extent. That was something that I was very worried about after looking at this team. You know, Slasher finishes off with a 0 0.95 in S&D, Octane with a 0 0.86. I had to ask you, with all the stats that we've listed, with all the issues that Hunter T currently possesses, because it sounds like from an outside perspective there is a lot, are you worried about this team improving on their faults heading into the qualifier? Oh, that's a strange. And my worry, I'm not worried at all. I think they can definitely be better. And I think they will be better. I think they will make improvements. I do think there is a slight chance that they don't look in the right direction or that ego gets in the way or whatever you want to call it for the team. Because I wouldn't be surprised if, like, ego, for example, was the problem they had coming in of saying, like, hey, guys, we got second in the pro down. We're feeling great. You get matched up against Team Sween on whatever station it was and say, hey, we are MVPs on this team, multi-time champion. We never even played anyone on Team Sween last year. We're going to run these guys over and not take it seriously. Maybe you fall asleep on the first map, then you try to wake up from map number two, but then it's S&D, you're having problems. All of a sudden, you find yourself 0-2 down, and then as soon as you lose to Team Sween, your tournament just gets insanely more difficult. So it could have been ego. It could have just been maybe you said in the hard point. Maybe some of the plays they had were just – uh, abnormal mistakes that because the team leader was who knows again I think this is a problem that the team is going to be able to best identify my concern is that maybe they don't my concern is they look in the wrong direction and say maybe like oh man we just suck we need a roster change let's get rid of person x or person y and try to pick up person x or whatever it may be instead of saying like here's where we screwed up in game here's what we fix and here's what we can do better because if you get second in the pro down, if you go toe to toe against the top teams in the world, I don't. I think it's maybe not a one off for a hundred thieves to do this poorly, but I don't expect that to happen consistently at all. Yeah, I agree. I, I think one thing though is kind of worrisome for this roster is the amount of time that it could take to figure out what exactly that outlier, what exactly the problem could be. And my only worry, right, is to an extent that there is only one opportunity, right? There is like this grace period that you have right now. And it's like, hey, like, let's take a self-reflection. Are we good? Depending on whether that answer is yes or no, now's the time to make that decision because the qualifier is starting to come up, right? And that's your key into the stage, into the season, which is pretty much your year. So that's one thing that I am a little bit worried about 100T is the amount of time that it takes to figure out that problem maybe longer than the time they have to qualify for the stage. And are they wanting to even play with each other? Like, is there so much of an issue that maybe like something, um, you know, could progress themselves to not play well if they keep a certain player or whatnot. But um, along with that, I, I want to know, is there a certain role? Like whenever you look at this team on paper and compared to the other groups that we saw who saw success like OG, you know, like Splice, E United, et cetera, the teams that played well, 
there were a lot of people coming into this tournament, or even after, who was saying, Kenny's not really wanting to run, you know, a SOG. He's really wanting to use the Maddox. So they have too many flex players on this team. You know, we have two pretty much standard ARs for over the last two seasons, or over the last few seasons. Do you think for this team there is a specific role that maybe doesn't make sense or a position that maybe would help this team see success? I No, I think it is a little bit strange to see Kenny with the Maddox instead of a SOG, but at the same time, like, the PPSH was great at long range and the SOG doesn't like fit that criteria. So the Maddox is probably closer to what he saw success with last year. So I don't think that part's strange. And I think rules in this game or roles, like, sorry, don't really exist. Like I think you have your ICR player and then kind of everyone else. And it just kind of depends on any given situation on the map. Like on Seaside, if you're going to the Fountain Hill, if your ICR player just happens to be alive at second, it's obviously not his job to rotate and lock down spawns. It could be the SOG player or the Maddox or whoever is the guy that just spawns in that position to make that play. So there's not really roles. There's just certain people need to use certain guns. If you're first, you're going to be sliding in first, whatever it is. But that's all like super situational, which all of these players should be good in the right situations. And I think a lot of the criticism, a lot of teams is going to be overblown because, again, if you just look at the tournament that 100 Thieves had, they lost to United. No one would question anybody that loses to United. They just got second there. Fantastic team. You say, okay, maybe you wanted it closer, but whatever. You took the 3-1 loss. That's fine. The Team Sween loss is what's huge because they lost so. But all that told me is, okay, Team Sween is legit. It didn't tell me that 100 Thieves is bad. It told me that the team is amazing. And then you fall in a loser's bracket. 100 Thieves gets the three over G2, which if they lost to G2, I would blow that roster up immediately and just say, 100 Thieves, like you got too many problems that can't be solved. But they beat them 3 0, and then they lose to LG. So they have three losses on the weekend. Two of them are the top four teams, both of which look pretty good. One team has Gunless on it, the other team is United, and they look fantastic. So I think ultimately you chalk it up to one bad series. You say, our SD is atrocious. We fix that. Next tournament will be just fine. So I don't want to go like too overboard and talking about like the struggles and the loss. I just chalk it up to a bad tournament. I also want to talk to you about a few other teams who did have a bad tournament quickly. I want to hear your thoughts. Envy, Red Reserve, Phase. We see Envy finish top 12. Red Reserve finished top 12. Phase top 16. Uh, do you think th there might be a change in store? Or do you think it's kind of the same situation that we saw with Hunter T, just a bad tournament for these rosters? Because... Like I said, one thing's for sure is that a lot of people like to overblow. Like I said, the big, like the first tournament of the year, like we've seen crazy results in the first tournament of a season over the last few years. You could argue this year a lot more stable than past, you know, based on the results and based on the teams who won. Um, but I think that one thing is for sure that we've seen quite a few results that were pretty crazy for, for you know, like I said, following years. This season, not much different. That could also cause, you know, some rosters to kind of self-reflect and say, okay, this year's different for them. Why is it not different than us? Do you think there could be a roster change involved for uh, some of the other rosters who struggled? Absolutely. Uh, I definitely think that's a possibility, if not just for the fact that Simp and uh, Celium are, are coming in. Celium or Celium, by the Cellium, way? Celium, I think. Cellium? Okay, Celium. Just because guys like that are going to be turning 18, potentially coming to the league, or if Fort Worth is the first event form, whatever it is, rosters are going to get shaked up. How good of rosters are going to be willing to make changes, I don't know. Like, I don't think Opti Gaming is going to drop like TJ for Simp or anything like too ridiculous. So maybe outside of the top six range, teams will be willing to make a change. But 100 Thieves, I don't think should. Envy is like a maybe for me. And then FaZe is also a maybe. But the maybe is like, I don't know what would necessarily be a good fit. Like for FaZe, I think Zuma just had a horrible event. But in World War II, he would have one horrible event. And then the next event, he'd look like the best SMG in the game. So with Zuma, it's just completely radical different players. It seems like you can get from one event to the next. And then for Envy, it is a core roster that overall last year had an inconsistent year until champs. And then they win the entire thing. And obviously you add Huke to that. But I don't know if there's like a player you would really want to drop on that team necessarily. Like if they have two bad events in a row, then sure, maybe a change is necessary. But I think like all these top teams, even though they're in the top 16 range, like for the most part, I wouldn't make a roster change unless you have two really bad events in a row. And then even then, it's just, it's, it's complicated. It's just complicated. Who knows?